So in your in your piece in uh, Columbia Journalism Review, you talk about your your notebook and camera uh, being something that you considered an all access access pass to anywhere you wanted to go, no matter how pro- private. What did you mean by that? Um, I meant that like a lot. Like I guess there's a couple things. Like it's sort of this adrenaline boost, and especially for somebody who. You know, I'm not great at parties all the time and I'm kind of an introvert, but when you have a notebook, you have a purpose. You know, I would go into neighborhoods that, you know, could be considered, you know, have a history of violence. And people would say, like, what the fuck are you doing here? Part of my language. And I would say, here's here's my notebook. I'm here to do this story. And oftentimes that would be enough. Um, sometimes people would ask for ID. Once I somebody asked me, for ID and I was really stupid and I showed him my press, my MPD police press pass. It says police department on it. And that's all they saw. And they were like, you're a cop. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, no. And I explained the fine print, but it was terrible. Was, so I never, I ended up never using the press pass. I just put it away. And so I felt for a long time, the, the notebook gives you a passport to places and license to be there, like a purpose. You're there to cover something um, in the, in the in so in, in many cases you're um going to a neighborhood you, you're parachuting in you know you're going into a neighborhood and it's up to you to either learn as much as you can about that neighborhood in a real way you know in a really concerted effort or to just pick and choose what you want and then leave i mean we see that that's in not great reporting is people parachute in they paint with a broad brush about a neighborhood or a community and then they leave and they never come back um you know, I like to stick around. So in a lot of cases I would show up and I would just be there for a month. And I love that those are the stories that I love the most, but getting back to your point, I think in a lot of cases too, it, the, the, the notebook, you make also the assumption that it's always okay to show up, to get in somebody's face, to, uh, you know, interrupt somebody's horrible moment to ask them questions that they may not want to ask or or be you know be asked and a lot of times it's there are moments where you know you feel like you are not so much violating someone's privacy but you are there's something <laughs> undignified about doing what you're doing one time this guy told me you know i i found tracked down this guy and i wanted to you know i showed up at a basketball court where he was and he said why don't you just leave me alone and I just thought that was like a really perfect answer to how he was feeling. I was like, I can't respond to that other than you're right. I'm going to leave you alone. You know, I think in a lot of cases though, reporters don't, I, I definitely saw that in, um, I covered the massacre at uh, West Virginia university when they had the uh, is it West Virginia. University? No, I'm sorry. Why am I blanking on this? Virginia, Virginia tech, Virginia tech. Yeah. Yeah. In Blacksburg. And, you know, I was really late. Um, we don't normally cover Blacksburg, and the editor just said, "You're going." Uh, it had it was the late afternoon of the massacre, and I drove down. I got there pretty late. Showed up at the crime scene. No one was there, but, but sat around and did what I had to do, and then went to where the families had gathered. It just seemed very clear that at a over the course of a few days. The university was sort of fed up with all the cameras. You know, there was people in mourning. It seemed intrusive in some ways. Um, but getting, I, I think I'm answering your question about just it can you can get the feeling of you're overstepping your bounds. It also gives you this license to just feel like you can be a jerk and get away with it. And I feel like in the lead of the story where I'm at the crime scene, that was a clear incident. I mean, it was the first thing I thought about when I was writing the essay when I had to come up with. You know, how was I going to start the piece? That was my first thought was that moment because it seemed very clear that I had overstepped my bounds and that in a way it was very symbolic of crime reporting. You go in, you record uh, someone's tragedy in stark terms, and then you get out and you don't, you're just there to capture someone's worst moment or, you know, and then leave. Yeah, I was, uh, I was an intern many, many God, it seems like a lifetime ago, but uh, 26 years ago on a television station's news assignment desk. And uh, 
at that time, the the new uh, post office there building in Chicago collapsed, and a bunch of the guys got hurt. A couple died. A couple were at the hospital. I was outside the hospital on a live truck. Some of the reporters doing the live shot, and we get a call, and they're like, "The fa- one of the people died in the hospital. One of the workers just died. His family's leaving through the back door. Take the other camera, and you got to go sit in back and get a. You got to get them on camera talking about it." And I'm sitting in the back of Cook County Hospital, shaking. Right, I'm 22 at the time or something, and the cameraman turns to me because I do not want to do this, and I can't for the life of me see the newsworthiness of this. Yeah, right? and he goes, what, what, "What? What's wrong with you?" Because my whole body was shaking, and he's like, "I'm like, I don't want to do this." He goes, "We're not getting out of this car unless another camera truck pulls up and pulls out their camera and will get us in their shot with us sitting in the car is the only reason we're getting out of this car. This is not news. We are not doing it. They can walk unless they come and knock on our window. We're not getting out. And um, I saw him many years later and at a Starbucks of all places and thanked him for that. But it was it was this I couldn't get over just this all out fetish fever that you had to get those quotes from those people right at that time yeah. and somehow yeah. there was value in it yeah and yeah i've i've definitely been in moments where i've thought what did i just do and like what was the or lately i feel that way too it's just like what's the value in pushing somebody one way or the other or you know really pushing it where you're asking uh you know to interview somebody in their worst moment over and over again that kind of thing 